as they put up today's topic, I want to share it with you because it's so empowering. And it's awaken your greatness. Don't be deceived. Genesis 3, 1 verses 1 through 13. As you get prepared, as I get prepared, I want you to read, read along with me this morning. And then we'll go into a prayer so that the Spirit of the Lord can speak this morning. Let me know with an amen once you have this verse opened. Hallelujah. And the Word of God reads, the serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord had made. Shrewdest means knowledgeable. It means smart. It means wise. It means a knowledge above what other animals or other creatures did not have in the Garden of Eden. This is a smart animal with a lot of wisdom. One day, he asked the woman, did God really say you must not eat of the fruit of any trees in the garden? This is a question. Of course we may eat. This is Eve speaking. From the trees in the garden, the woman replied, it's only the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said you must not eat or even touch it because if you do you will die you won't die said the serpent you won't die the serpent replied to the woman God knows that your eyes will be open as soon as you eat it and you will be like God knowing both good and evil the woman was convinced she saw the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious she wanted the wisdom it would give her so she took some of the fruit and ate it then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too at that moment their eyes were opened and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness so they sewed figs of layers of leaves to cover themselves and when the cool evening breezes were blowing the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden so they hid from the Lord among the trees then the Lord called to the man and said where are you where are you he replied I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? And the man replied, it was the woman. The woman you gave me made me eat the fruit and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, what have you done? The serpent deceived me the serpent deceived me she replied that's why i ate it let's pray this morning father god your word is already blessed your word is already revealing father god power your word is already stating god what you've spoken over adam and eve and over every single soul in this place i pray that at this moment god you awaken what's in the inside of every one of us into greatness where we can deliver our weaknesses into strength father i pray that this word father god will penetrate like a double sword through every single heart I pray that this word may edify, that this word may awaken, that this word may teach, Father God, of the enemy's plan. Equip us with the tools that we need to be able to fulfill your glory and your journey towards our lives in the kingdom of God. You may sit down. So we see that we have in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve. We have these two wonderful people that the Lord had created. See, when the Lord created Adam and Eve, he created them with the purpose of living in a beautiful garden full of peace, full of power, full of goodness. See, God intended for them to live a beautiful life so that you and I can live a beautiful life. See, Adam and Eve were told specifically about the policies and the procedures of the Garden of Eden. 
The Lord had established already rules and regulations for a reason. Because God knew that the moment that their eyes would be open to sin and knowledge, it would shift the atmosphere. It would shift God's plan. But I came here to tell you today, you need to remain strong. You need to submit to the word of God so that your atmosphere doesn't shift to the opposite of deceivement. And that is exactly what we see. This is a perfect example in the Garden of Eden. But what gets me angry, what makes me angry, is that the serpent had the decency to question God's power. It had the decency to question God's authority. You see, that is why the enemy feels weak. Because he knows that when God speaks, God speaks. He knows that God is not a man to lie, nor a man to change what he's spoken over your life. Keep that in mind. And we're going to read more into that later on. But as you see, God had created a beautiful environment for them. He created beautiful plans. But all it took was just a simple question, just four words. So God said so God said that question shifted her mind that question opened up five things that I'm gonna share with you this morning the enemy's plan against you to destroy you and to destroy me I am going to equip you with the tools that you need to survive in the middle of doubt I am gonna give you tools that will help you overcome Adam and Eve weren't able to overcome but because of the death of Christ he had to fix that whole situation he had to fix the problem God had to send his son to die in the cross for you and I to be saved and to follow a holy path It was like a seed. It was like a seed that the serpent just threw out at Eve. A seed that began to create all these scenarios in her mind that she started thinking, well, maybe, yes, maybe I could be like God. Maybe I do want to be like God. Well, nobody can be like God exactly, but we are a reflection created to his image. But maybe Eve, in her innocence, she wasn't thinking like the serpent. See, there's people that surround us sometimes that are like serpents. And they're around us. And they try to be our friends. And they try to pretend like they want the best for us. But they question what God spoke over your life. And they come in a way that I just want the best for you. But let me just ask you, is it really true that God called you? Is it really true that God gave you the talent of singing, the talent of preaching, the talent of being a teacher, of directing the youth, of directing the kids, directing the women's ministry, the men's ministry, of evangelizing, of prophesizing, of prayer? Did God really give you that? Because you know what, sister? You know what, brother? You were kind of trembling the other day. It wasn't your best day. Well, let me tell you, we don't always have best days, but we make the good things be good. And the bad things will turn into our own good, God says. God has spoken into our lives. I will make all the bad things to your good, to your benefit. There is no doubt about that. Can I hear an hallelujah? So that seed, that seed, it's all it took. And you know what? Sometimes we plant a flower, we plant a seed, and we have to water it in order for it to grow and flourish, right? Well, let me tell you, this seed that the serpent planted in Eve's head was drastic. It was fast. It took seconds to convince her to change her mind. And a lot of the times, the enemy will try to flourish in your life like he's goodness, like he's better than God, like he knows better than God, and he will question what God has spoken over your life, and he will plant that seed. And I want to give you these five tools so that you can be equipped as an overcomer. Satan plan against you and against me see the spirit of the lord was showing me these last few months that the lord has been speaking to a lot of you that are here and that is why you're here this morning because you are believing the power of god and the word that has been imparted in your life and you are starting to walk towards that destiny you are starting to pursue and you are starting to believe and let me tell you that the enemy is angry he's seeing an army rising he's seeing an army lifting an army believing in revival an army believing in miracles an army believing in healing and let me tell you he's angry because you are rising to the step you are believing in the calling and the enemy is preparing itself 
with its weapons to come and distract you, to change your atmosphere, to drift you away from God's plan. The first one is doubt. We see this in the Garden of Eden. This is one of the tools the enemy, Satan, the serpent uses against your life. Doubt. It distracts you from believing the calling of God. It distracts you by thinking, will I be able to do this? Is it possible? Do I have the capability? Is there capacity in me? Am I anointed to do it? God, I am not wise. God, I didn't go to school. He starts brainstorming these thoughts in your mind to start thinking that you are not capable of doing it doing God's calling over your life we see this as an example Thomas Thomas was a disciple of the Lord and Thomas I can imagine that in his journey as a disciple with Jesus he was confronted with a lot of miracles that he did he saw the wonders he saw the miracles he saw the deeds but you know what Thomas doubted in his heart about the resurrection of God he doubted about the resurrection of God, even being a follower. See, it's not enough to be a follower of Christ. It's not enough to be a follower of Christ. You gotta become a son. You gotta become a daughter. You gotta become part of his DNA, part of his blood. See, Thomas didn't believe. And it wasn't until the actual resurrection happened that he believed. See, you don't have to see things in order to believe. That is why the Lord spoke in the Bible and said, faith is not the things that you see. It's the unknown things where you practice faith. Gideon. Gideon was another one. He was shy about God's calling. God called him to fight an army. But he said, how am I going to do this? I'm not capable of doing this. There's many in this army. It's only one of me, God. He questioned God. He doubted. See, that's what the enemy does. The Lord calls you into an assignment. And the enemy tries to bring that doubt to put a stop to that. But it wasn't until the Lord spoke to Gideon and said, hey, who is fighting with you? Who's going to fight for you? God Almighty, I'm going to fight for you and I'm going to give you victory. And it wasn't until he saw that the Lord fought that war for him that he believed. And then you have the beauty of Sarah and Abraham. Along the Old Testament, you see Sarah and Abraham, they served the Lord. They did a lot of things for the Lord. They walked in faith. But they did something that captivated my heart that I said, God, after so much knowledge, after knowing you, after reading the word of God, after practicing your glory, why did they laugh at the blessing you were providing them of bearing a son at such an old age? Why? Because sometimes there are things in the unknown that seem impossible, that seem crazy. But you know what? Pastor has preached a lot about those crazy worships, those crazy blessings. They seem crazy, but for God, their glory. For God, their glory. And they laughed. They had the decency to laugh. See, when God speaks over your life, he's being serious. He's being real serious, very serious. He's giving you an assignment so that it can be done. You don't get homework at school so that it can be unfinished. You get a bad grade if it's unfinished. Therefore, God is calling you to the assignment. He's calling you to accomplish it, finish it. If you started it, finish it. He will provide you with the tools. He will equip you with the power. He will guide you. He will anoint you for it. And what happens next? Sarah and Abraham bear a son. They have a son. Oh, now you believe? Now you believe that I can give you a son and you can bear a son in the middle of your old age? There's nothing impossible for God. God dwells in uncomfortable places. God dwells when you're feeling uncomfortable. God dwells when there is a calling over your life and you don't know how to do it. You don't know how you're going to get there. The road is unknown, but I'm going to walk. I'm going to keep walking. And if there is a rock, I'm going to move it out of the way. And I'm going to keep walking. And I'm going to rebuke if I have to. And I'm going to pray if I have to. I'm going to fast if I have to. I'm going to build a stronger relationship with God if I have to. But I got to do what it takes to gain my victory and to scare the enemy out of my life. In the book of Numbers, 
23, 19. If we can go there. The book of Numbers, 23, 19. God reminds us and God reveals something powerful in this word. And you might think, well, it's just a few verses. It's just a few verses. But you know what? In this verse, the moment that you start thinking spiritual, the moment that you start thinking kingdom is where you're going to have an understanding of why God laid this verse in the Bible. God is not a man that he should lie, neither a son of man, that he should repent. Have he said, and he will do it. Or have he spoken, and he will not make it good. See, God is revealing in here that what he's spoken in your life, no one can change it. Nobody can take away the gifts, the talents, the anointing, the power, the calling that he's given you. There's only a greater enemy and that could be yourself and the serpent that can apart you from that calling see god is revealing here that he is a man that keeps his word he is not going to change his mind over you so if you feel discouraged if you feel like you failed if you feel like you couldn't do it the first time well let me tell you get back up again rise up to the step and start awakening the greatness that lies in you there is greatness in you that is hiding inside of you but you need to release it you need to awaken it stop letting it sleep stop letting it sleep there's greatness there's knowledge abilities gifts talents ministry in your life but we continue to put it to sleep doubt number one two discouragement he makes you look at the problem rather than looking at God. He makes you look at what you did wrong, where you went wrong. He makes you look at the problem rather than God. See, a lot of the times we're so focused in the problem. We're so focused on how am I going to get out of this? How am I going to do this? I want to do it with my own strength. Well, let me tell you, it's not going to come from your own strength because the word of God says that in your weakness, God makes you stronger. And that is why you got to trust and lay that in God. Don't be discouraged. If you fail, God will rise you once again. If there is a repentant heart that wants to achieve, that wants to reach goals, that has dreams, God will do it. As long as there is a repentant heart. Discouragement. And we see this in the Garden of Eden. We see this at the moment that Adam and Eve took part of that fruit. Their knowledge opened to sin, to the good. So automatically they run, they make leaves to dress themselves and they hide. But then you hear the voice of God calling. And sometimes the voice of God is calling you. The voice of God is whispering at you. And you hide because you feel discouraged. Because there was doubt and you're afraid on how to approach God at that moment. And that is exactly what happened with Adam and Eve. They were afraid, so they hid. They hid from God. In the book of Chronicles 2015, the Lord is speaking to Joseph. And he tells all those people in Judah and in Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. And this is what the Lord is saying to you this morning do not be afraid or discouraged because of the vast army for the battle is not yours but it is God see an army will rise God has been speaking over preaching and preaching God has been showing through prophecy in the English in the Spanish ministry what God is going to do in your life God has spoken to you that he's going to use you in the word that he's going to use you in healing that he's going to use you with the youth with the children in the nations in the community and the enemy is listening the enemy is listening that you're being empowered by this prophetic word by the word that has been called upon you but God says it's not your fight it's my fight so let God do his work and you do yours three diversion he makes the wrong things 
seem attractive so that you stop moving forward to the right things. And we see this in the book of Matthew. If you can go with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew 4, chapter 4, 1 through 11. Makes the things look attractive that are not good so that you can seek for those things that seem more attractive than God's. And this is exactly what happens with Jesus himself, where Satan takes him to tempt him. Then was Jesus led up to the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he afterward hungered. And the tempter came and said unto him, if thou art the son of God, command that these stones become bread. And I want to stop there for a minute. See, Jesus was fasting for 40 days. That means that he had a very close encounter with the Spirit of God. That means that he was equipped. That means that he was prepared because he was building a relationship. He was seeking God. You see, this is where the seed of the enemy comes. This is where the enemy wants to deceive you. The moment that you start working, the moment that you start engaging in the promise of God, the seed of the enemy is going to want to disturb you and take away God's perfect plan. He did it to Jesus himself. But, the, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. But then the devil takes him into the holy city and he sets him on the pinnacle of the temple and says unto him, if thou art the son of God, cast thyself down for it is written he shall give his angels in charge concerning thee on their hands they shall bear thee up let's apply though dash the food against his stone but Jesus said unto him again it is written those shall not make trial of thy God and again the devil see the devil's not giving up on you just like he's not giving up on Jesus he's not giving up on you and I Again, the devil taketh him onto the exceeding high mountain. See, he's going to want to take you to the high mountain to where you can see and you can view all the glory, all the beautiful things, just kind of like they paint him in Hollywood. But you know what? There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in seeking God. There is power in building relationship in God. So taking him onto the exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, all these things will give thee if you fall and down and worship me. Not only did he want to remove him from the shifting of the atmosphere that the Spirit of God was already building in the middle of the relationship. He wanted him to have him kneel down to him. See, the moment that the enemy distracts you, the moment that you start becoming numb, the moment that you start becoming asleep, you stop feeling what's surrounding you, you stop feeling the Holy Spirit, he wants you to bow. He feels like you're bowing to him. He feels like you're worshiping because you're doing the contrary. But then he said, Jesus, on to him, get thee hands, Satan, for it is written, those shall not worship the Lord God, and him only shall those serve. And you know what? This is what impacts me the most. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered on him. See, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. See, we are sons and daughters of the Almighty. See, you carry the DNA. You carry the blood. You carry the authority. You carry gifts. You carry healing. You carry power because we're sons and daughters of God. Therefore, equip yourself so that the enemy can flee from you in moments of diversion, in moments when he wants to offer all these things that are not attractive that will bind you and close you to connect to the real good things of God. Number four, defeat. 
it makes you feel like a failure so that you don't even start on anything oh man see in this moment he stops you before you even get started that's powerful that's very powerful you have something in your mind you have that beautiful knowledge that you want to awaken your spirit to work hard and you say i'm gonna do it next week and then you say i'm gonna do it next month and then six months go by and then a year goes by and then it's 10 years and you're still not pursuing it see he puts a stop for you to even begin something hallelujah we see that in the book of jeremiah 8 4. see jeremiah says to the people of judah this is what the lord god says you know if a man falls down he gets up again and if a man goes the wrong way he turns around and comes back again what is god telling you here if you failed if you've drifted away if you forgot the word of god if you forgot what god's spoken just turn back you just gotta turn back easy just turn back and start building that relationship with god don't allow there to be more delay in your life to be more delay in the calling of the spirit of god there's something in the inside of you that needs to burst there's something in the inside of you that needs to start flowing rivers of living water and that is called greatness that greatness needs to be awakened so that you can move forward and accomplish God's perfect journey and path for you. Defeat. It felt like a defeat in the Garden of Eden. And when I was reading this, I said, God, I mean, how did it happen? And I just couldn't explain myself. I mean, you had the power to stop all of this. And the Spirit of God said, stop right there. What is one of the weapons the enemy uses against you? doubt just leave it there don't question god just listen to the word if it is written it's written for a reason if it is in the book it is because it's written in the book <laughs> defeat adam and eve were defeated in the garden of eden but the lord told something to the serpent and what did he tell him you will drag yourself on the floor. What did he tell the woman? You will have pain in labor and birth. What did he tell the man? You will work hard with your sweat. There was a consequence. But God didn't leave it there. See, God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross so that that sin could be removed. And that way, that is why you and I are here today, because there was a God that rose in that moment who had already desired power, grace, happiness, joy, a beautiful life for you. And he died in the cross so all of that could be removed so that you can have an opportunity to be part of the kingdom of God. It's not easy. The road of the unknown is hard. It's where you have to minister and habilitate your faith. Because sometimes you don't have the tools to start something. And that is why it's called walk by faith and not by sight. In the book of Philippians, we see that the Lord speaks and says, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Don't forget that. If God's spoken a word over you, if you already started stepping up to the, to the plate, keep walking. Keep walking. Don't look back. Don't listen to the voice of the serpent. Don't allow him to say what he did to Eve. Did God really say? Because the moment that that question enters your mind, it's going to open hundreds of scenarios, hundreds of opportunity outside of God's will. And five... Another weapon that the enemy is trying to use to execute a finish in our ministry is delay. It makes you put off things so that it never gets done. And what happens with Adam and Eve? They come across this perfect plan through God and then there's this question and curiosity. In the book of Psalms we see, 
I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. Don't put it on delay. If God has already established a word in you, if he's already commanded you, if he's told you he's going to use you, don't delay it. Just say, yes, God, here I am. Use me. You will give me the necessary tools that I will need to overcome this. You will guide me through the road. And when I feel like falling, I will trust in you, God. Ecclesians 5.4 when you make a vow to God, do not delay to fulfill it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. I'm telling you, fulfill your vow. Gain strength from God. Build your relationship. In the middle of your trial, in the middle of your crisis, trust God. Trust God. He will guide you through it. And one way for us to be able to defeat the enemy and allow him to flee from us as he did with Jesus when he was tempted in the book of James 4, 7 says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will free from you. He will flee from you. What does that mean? He will flee from you. That means that he's seen some sort of evidence of the Holy Spirit. That means that he is seeing a man and a woman rising up to step up. And he starts seeing that. He starts smelling the DNA. He starts smelling the blood of God. He starts smelling goodness. He starts smelling that you're rising and awakening your, your greatness. He's going to flee from you because he's frightened. The moment that you execute every single tool that God has given you, you will make the enemy flee from you. And there will be no challenge that will remove what God has spoken over your life. And that is why going back to the Garden of Eden, we see that the Lord dies and resurrects on the third day to bring salvation to our lives. And I want to give you one last verse that will equip you to continue to fight and I'm going to ask the worship team to come up and as I deliver this to you allow this to be a word of strength so that you can pursue what is coming so that you can pursue what God has spoken over your life the book of Isaiah 58 11 See, your power starts with a seed. But that seed has the victory over every single defeat that is connected to it. And Jehovah will guide thee continually. Not just one day, not just two days. He will guide you continually. And satisfy the soul in dry places and make strong thy bones and those shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not God is with you God is strengthening you God wants to put waters of river flowing in you God wants to embrace you God doesn't want it to finish see there's not a stop to God's glory we're never going to finish until he comes the moment that he comes then we will finish the race but as long as that we are here we need to walk we need to move forward we need to believe we need to bound every negative seed and release it from our lives release it from our spirit it is your victory this morning